So here we let me talk to acute otitis media. Before to go acute otitis media, let me explain about this picture. This is the anatomy of ER. The ER has a three parts: outer, outer ear, middle, and inner. So this one is ear canal, and there are three bones in the middle ear. We call malleus, incus, and stapes, shortly called MIS, mis. In the inner ear, we can see the cochlea, which is the organ to maintain the equilibrium. And this one is the eustachian tube. This is the bigger picture, same structure, showing external ear, middle ear, and inner ear. It is called pinna or auricle. There are three cartilages, and this is meatus or external ear canal. In, in the middle ear, we can see auditory ossicle. There are three bones together we call auditory ossicle. It is MIS, easy way to remember. And also the inner ear, we can see cochlea and also seminal canal, this one. And also we see the eustachian tube. This is the tube. Now question come, what is otitis media? What are the risk factor? What are the signs and symptom? Medication and surgical management. So otitis media, it is the middle ear infection. This is the middle ear, right? So let me read it. Otitis media is an inflammatory disorder usually causes of by causes of or by an infection of the middle ear occurred as a result of a blocked eustachian tube this is the eustachian tube which is prevent the normal drainage and can be it can be Otitis media can be acute or chronic. So middle ear infection can be acute, means sudden, but when it is come repeatedly, again and again, we call it chronic. There are some risk factor related to otitis media, like shorter eustachian tube or if the children less than seven years old and you station to be shorter, they frequently get otitis media. Or otitis media is a common complication of an acute respiratory infection, most commonly from respiratory syncytial viral or influenza organism. Infant and children have eustachian tube that are shorter, wider, straight, which make them more prone to otitis media. Sometimes patients give a history of secondhand smoke or it is infection catch up from daycare or non-compliance with vaccine. So in the picture, you can see the cleft lips or cleft palate. They have also chance to middle ear infection. So usually 
it is triggered by bacterial or viral infection. The, what are the sign and symptom? Before to sign and symptom, let me show how we can prevent it. So feed the infant in upright position to prevent reflux. So if our baby have it, it is good to upright position during feeding. Maintain the routine immunization, caressing the breastfeeding for at least about six months of age. Avoid exposure to tobacco, avoid to smoke and allergen. You maybe ask me, baby do not do tobacco smoking. Why it is important? We call secondhand smoking. Maybe I'm smoking in front of my baby. So they are get attacked by tobacco in their lungs. So data collection or sign symptom, patient usually come with pulling on ear, fever, acute onset of ear pain, or crying. Pediatrics patient do not tell everything, but they cry when they have a problem. Or irritability, lethargy, loss of appetite, or ruling of head from side to side. Some of the patient develop pass or hearing issues, decrease the movement of tympanic membrane. What next? What are the other data collection? Pulling on or rubbing the ear or purulent means pass discharge. Ear drainage may be present. Red, opaque, bulging, Immobilize, immobile tympanic membrane on otoscopic exam. So when we examine the middle ear or tympanic membrane by otoscopic ophthalm, otoscopic uh, device, we can see the bulging, inflamed tympanic membrane, right? It is a diagnostic. So in this picture, you can see this is the tympanic membrane here, right, redness. So otoscope, basically less than three years old, if the children, we pull the peanut down and back. If our children more than three years, we should pull the peanut up and back during the otoscopic examination. So now go intervention, right? Caressing fluid intake or re-educate instruction to the child to avoid the chewing. Because when baby do the chewing, their pain getting up. So chewing as much as possible, avoid during the acute period of attack because chewing increase the pain. What else? Provide local heat and cold as prescribed and it relieve the pain or patient feel comfort. Right, the child lie with affected ear, on affected ear down. Re-educate the instruction to the parents in appropriate procedure to clean the drainage from external ear canal with a sterile swab or gauze. And frequent cleaning is important and also a application of moisture barriers may be prescribed to prevent 
the ear drainage, right? So what are the medication we're supposed to use? Reinforce the instruction to the parents in administration of analgesics and antibiotics. So drug of choice is a antibiotics. We give analgesia or for pain and antipyretics for fever. So analgesic or antipyretics, most commonly we use acetaminophen or ibuprofen. What next? Reinforce the instruction to the parents in the administration of antibiotics. In healthy infant, over the so in healthy infant over the six month and children, careful use of antibiotics is recommended because of concern about the drug resistant streptococcus pneumonia. Reinforce the instruction to the parents that scanning for hearing loss. Because hearing loss is a complication. So this one is an NPLEX board ask the question, right? It is the um, question NPLEX board asks. Intervention, reinforce the instruction to the parents about the procedure of administer the ear medication such as antibiotics or other medication. So in first picture, we can see the baby who is who is younger than three years old. This picture, the boy who is more than older than three years. So in first picture, we can see the before or during giving the or administer the ear drop that children younger than three years old, we pulling the ear lobe down and backwards. Whereas this boy, the child older than three years, we pull the pinna up and back. In this picture can help us how we remember. When your baby is less than three years old, right, child, C-H-I-L-D, D for down. So pull ear down and back for infant and children less than three years old. When the adult person or anybody more than three years old, adult, A-D-U-L-T, U and P up, pull the ear back and up for older children and adult person. Next here, what are the surgical management? When conservative treatment is not enough to cure arthritis media, we give the surgical management. And this is called myringotomy. Myringotomy and placement of the tube. In this picture, you can see placement of the tube. A surgical incision into the tympanic membrane to provide the drainage of purulent middle ear tube. It may be done by a laser assist procedure. Also insertion of tympanoplastic tube into the middle ear may be done and allow the continued drain and also equalize the pressure because inside the ear, we know this one 
it is called cochlea. This is important to maintain the equilibrium and our posture it is important. Also, maintain the pressure, allow the best bend relation of middle ear. But after the procedure, I mean, after the maringotomy, what are the management? What are the teaching we need to know for our patient, right? So what we teach, we teach them, tube will cone out spontaneously or notify provider when tube come out. Also avoid getting water in the children ear with the tube in place. Let me read it. Re-educate instruction to the parents and child to keep the ear dry. The child should wear the ear plug while bathing, shampooing, or swimming. Parents can administer an analgesia like acetaminophen or ibuprofen for pain or for pyrexia. Parents should be tough that the child should not blow below, blow his or her nose for seven to 10 days after surgery. 